Focus, you son of a gun. You know what my favorite thing about the GH5 is? The autofocus. Welcome everybody to the first tutorial on this page, on this site, on our YouTube channel. I don't even know if it's a tutorial. I'm really just gonna be showing you how I edit a photo. That's a tutorial, right? This is gonna be dicey. All right, let the uh, first photo editing tutorial commence. By the way, you should see all of this is a, this looks like a train wreck. So Becca and I went out yesterday and tried to get all artsy fartsy and uh, we tried some hair flips. So that's the photo we're gonna be using today. The very first thing I learned to do was from a Peter McKinnon tutorial and he suggested to hit the auto tone button. And uh, I rather like that option. I think it kind of gives you a nice base as he explains in his video. That's where we're gonna start. The next place most people start is in this window here and they try to get it all balanced out. I'm impatient and I like jumping right to the color. So that's usually where I start. I usually like to dial in the greens first. So the first thing I'll do is change the hue of the greens to something that looks ridiculous. I'll bring the saturation of that hue down now. Um, another thing that I like to do is either pull out the yellows entirely or sometimes I like to push them over towards the greens as well. So once I've got the colors that I like, I bring the brightness of them down a bit. And in this particular photo, all of the green is behind the subject. So I want the subject to pop out a little bit more. In this case, it's Becca. So I'll bring the brightness of everything behind her down just by adjusting the luminance slider for those colors. If you hit the backslash button, give you a little before and after. Now, I rather like the direction that's going in, except I wanna push, instead of the yellows into the greens, I'm gonna push them over into the orange. Yes, I'm liking that a little bit more. I'll pull the hue of the green back a bit. Put a before and after. Yeah, that's looking all right. Now that my impatience has gotten the best of me, I'll jump over to the tone curve and start making adjustments here. This is a simple S curve. Everything on this side deals with the highlights. Everything over here deals with the shadows or the darks. Whoops, my finger slipped. I like to bring the shadows down a bit. Bring up the highlights a tiny bit. Click this little button here to have a before and after. You see how it starts to really come together. Now, another thing I like to do is instead of that, I will start adjusting and put a seven point curve on this. Now this looks like it's gonna be, this looks like it's gonna be messy, but if you stick, stick it out to the end, you're gonna see some pretty tight results. By messing with these tone curves, you can get, you can get a really unique color palette because it's so hard to kind of get each of these in the same spot, you're almost guaranteed to get a slightly different look every time, unless you create a preset with this and apply it, but then you'll probably get a different look anyway because the components of the photo are gonna be different. Okay, now that that's looking overly contrasty, I'm gonna dial this back just a little bit. Her skin's looking a little orange, so I'm gonna come into the orange section and start pushing it just a tiny bit over towards red. Maybe desaturate a little bit. Also, I want to brighten it up just a tiny bit. It's looking pretty neat. Okay, so the next thing I like to do is hit it with a brush tool. So the brush tool allows you to take everything that we've just used and apply it to very specific parts of the photo. So to start, I created a preset called Facelift. It just kind of brightens everything slightly, adds a little bit of sharpness, and, and I put the flow up way too high. There we go. Now what this is gonna do is just help bring out some of the detail. It'll make this portion of the photo shine just a bit brighter than everything else, which will also help it stand out. And you can click this little button here to see the before and after. Very nice. Create a new brush and I have something that I created for the background. And what this one is gonna do, it's gonna lower the contrast of the background, lower the exposure of the background, make it just a tiny bit more blurry. 
the result is that it's going to help the subject pop. I feel like we're just a little too saturated here, so I'm gonna jump into the greens and pull the saturation down. That's looking much better. That's, that's what I wanted to see. And these blues, I feel like they don't fit. Using the HSL slider, you can completely change the look of a particular color within your composition. So you can see the options are limitless. <laughs> well, that probably peaked. All right, jumping over to the calibration here. I'm gonna push the blues over to the teals a little bit. Now I'm liking the way that this is making her hair look, but I don't like what it's doing to her face. So I'm gonna go in and use a brush tool. If you hit O, you can see what you've been affecting. It'll show it represented with a red hue. Now this is working very slowly because I'm exporting a 22 minute podcast. My computer doesn't like it, doesn't like it at all. All right, so now that I've masked out this particular area, I'm gonna just pull down the saturation. There we go. And now for this full photo, I'm going to see what it looks like when I push it over to the cold side of the temperature. <whistles> Things are getting crazy. I like it, but not quite what I'm looking for. So let's see what happens when we push it over to the warmer side. Like it very much. Now the skin tones are all off again. So I'm gonna jump back in, we push the skin tones towards the cooler side. See them before and after. So I wanna say that this is how I edit a photo, but more accurately, this is how I edit this photo. Next time it's gonna be completely different, so remember just have some fun with it. Anyway, see you next time.